Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Township Council Workshop Agenda meeting Monday, April 17, 2023. This meeting is now called to order. Mr. Callahan and Mr. Ken Poore is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing after the Pledge of Allegiance. Former State County Sheriff Engelhardt died last week. He was 93. He was a member of the hardware store owner and member of the Patterson Police and Fire. Edward joined the U.S. Army in, in 1951 and served in, in the Korean War in South Korea and continued to serve his country until 1956. In 1955, he was president of Neil Grand Hardware. In 1965, he became the Patterson Police Commissioner until 1971. In 1974 to 2001, he served as the Sheriff of Say County. Sheriff Engelhart was a leader and member and a mentor to many officers and our thoughts and prayers go to the Sheriff's family. You may be seated. Mrs. Kraus, please call the statement of public notice. Take notice that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with NJSA 10-4-8 and NJSA 10 colon 4-10 as follows. The notice of the meeting was prominently posted on the bulletin board at the municipal building located at 225 Main Street, Little Falls, New Jersey on January 5th, 2023. Copy of the notice was mailed to the North Jersey Herald and News and the record on the same date. Additionally, a copy of the notice was filed in the office of the township clerk on said date. A link and a telephone number to join the meeting virtually can be accessed on the township website at www.lfnj.com. Electronic provisions have been established for the public to participate during the public comment portion of the meeting. Thank you. Mrs. Kraus, please call the roll. Councilmember Patel. Councilmember Murphy. Present. Councilmember Hablitz. Present. Councilmember Vancheri. Present. Council President Scoba. Present. Mayor Dino, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Uh, this evening, before I get into the uh, proclamations that we have on the agenda, uh, I would just like to welcome a few of the new businesses that we have joining us here in town. Uh, we've done a couple of grand openings, and I want to thank uh, all of you as council members for joining me at the Ribbon Cuttings. Uh, I know it's uh, important to all of these business owners, uh, and I want to do it here publicly in welcoming them to, to town, although we've done official ribbon cuttings for them. Uh, recently, we've done ribbon cuttings for Little Bite, uh, Dina Duva Photography, Wall to Wall Sports, Olive Bistro, and purify. So if you haven't uh, visited any of those businesses, please uh, feel free to do so. They are great new additions to our, to our town. Uh, next to tonight, one of the proclamations that I would like to read is not on the agenda. It is in support of our Veterans Affairs Centers, uh, which are, in my opinion, lacking across the state of New Jersey. And I have been asked if I would to read a proclamation in supporting the addition of another, of another Veterans Affair uh, Center here. Uh, and veterans are someone who, for those younger individuals here in the crowd joining us, uh, are, are oftentimes people who put themselves before others. And then when they return from fighting overseas, supporting everything that we enjoy here, uh, oftentimes shy away from getting help that sometimes they need and oftentimes don't ever look for the recognition that they rightfully deserve. Uh, tonight, I know of three, at least three great veterans that sit all right up here and help this town run smoothly. And I'm sure there may be some more in the crowd. And one of them is our Little Falls Police Chief, Brian Prawl. Another is our Township Business Administrator, Chuck Cuccia. And the third, sitting on my left here, is our Assistant Business Administrator, Vince Quattrone. Those are three veterans, and I'm wondering if there are any other veterans that join us in the crowd, any other parents that are here this evening. If you are, I'm going to ask you to stand. Well, this evening, I have a proclamation in support of the establishment of a Veterans Affairs Center in Northwest New Jersey. And it reads, whereas veteran centers are critical community-based counseling centers that provide social and psychological services, including professional readjustment counseling, marriage counseling, and family counseling to eligible veterans, active duty service members, reservists, members of the National Guard, and their families by offering services during non-traditional hours. And whereas the Veterans Administration, the VA, 
operates five vet centers in New Jersey located in Bloomfield, Egg Harbor, Edwin, Lakewood, and Seacocks. And whereas veterans residing in Morris, Sussex, Warren, and Hunterdon utilize the vet centers located in either Bloomfield, Secaucus, or Ewing, placing severe travel burdens on individuals who need to travel, sometimes over an hour, to receive necessary mental health services. And whereas following the COVID-19 pandemic, many veterans are reporting increased rates, uh, rates of hypervigilance, isolation, anxiety, and stress. And whereas by establishing a sixth vet center in Northwest New Jersey, the VA will be able to continue to provide quality counseling services to veterans, service members, reservists, members of the National Guard, and their families in an accessible location closer to their homes. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, on behalf of the Township of Little Falls, support the efforts of the Member of Congress, specifically Representative Mikey Sherrill and Representative Tom Keene, in asking for the establishment of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, a VA Vet Center, in Northwest New Jersey and other undeserved, underserved areas across the country. I want to ask all of, you, all of you to join and give me a round of applause to all the veterans that have served this country. Next up this evening, we have a proclamation for National Donate Life Month. In which, whereas realizing the urgent need for organ and tissue donors across the country, the National Donate, Donate Life Month observance promotes a greater understanding about the life-saving benefits of donation and transplantation. Moreover, the need is increasing. And whereas the transplantation of organs and tissues is a miracle of modern medicine made possible through the compassion of organ and tissue donors, enabling surgeons to save thousands of lives every year. One organ donor can save eight lives and one tissue donor can restore health to over 75 others. People of all ages, ethnic backgrounds, and religions are touched by donation and the serious shortage of organ donors that exists. According to the New Jersey Sharing Network, currently there are nearly 4,000 New Jersey residents and more than 100,000 Americans awaiting life-saving transplant operations. And whereas every capable person should support this vital effort by registering as an organ and tissue donor, making their family aware of their wishes and being willing to give the precious gift of health, sight and life to people in need. And whereas the New Jersey Sharing Network is spearheading an awareness effort in order to educate the general public about the importance of organ donations and in its life-saving mission. Now, therefore, be it resolved that during April 2023, as National Donate Life Month, each of us will become better educated about organ and tissue donation. Be it further resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, do hereby recognize April 2023 as National Donate Life Month in the Township of Little Falls. Now, many of you also know that April is also Earth Day month, and Earth Day exists here, and it's one day that we look to clean and keep clean our Earth, April 22nd. Now, just because April 22nd is designated as Earth Day doesn't mean that every day is not a good day to make sure that we pick up litter and keep the Earth clean. So th this evening, in advance of April 22nd, I have a proclamation to read in support of Earth Day. And it reads, whereas Earth Day originated in the U.S. in 1970 to increase awareness of environmental problems and was renamed by the U.N. as International Mother Earth Day. And whereas scientists estimate dozens of plants and animals will go extinct each day due to human activity. And whereas humans generate 4.5 pounds of trash per day, and according to Recycle Now, nearly 80% of all plastic waste ever created by humans is still in the environment today. And whereas there are many small things we can do each day that will make a huge difference for our planet, such as to recycle, carpool, use fuel efficient cars and stop littering. And whereas every year on April 22nd, Earth Day demonstrates environmental support and how we can protect our planet from further harm. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, on behalf of the Township Council, do hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2023, as Earth Day in the Township of Little Falls. And the last and final proclamation that we have this evening is a proclamation for National Child Abuse Prevention Month. And we have two individuals joining us this evening from uh, Passaic County Casa, Mike and Sasha, and I'm going to ask them to join me up here for the reading of this proclamation. Yes. 
Whereas in federal fiscal year 2021, 3.9 million reports were made to Child Protective Services. And whereas child abuse and neglect is a serious problem affecting every segment of our community and finding solutions requires input and action from everyone. And whereas our children are our most valuable resources and will shape the future of our world. And whereas child abuse can have long-term psychological, emotional, and physical effects that have lasting consequences for victims of abuse. And whereas protective factors are conditions that reduce or eliminate risk and promote the social, emotional, and developmental well-being of children. And whereas effective child abuse prevention activities succeed because of the partnerships created between child welfare professionals, education, health, community, and faith-based organizations, businesses, law enforcement agencies, and families. And whereas communities must make every effort to promote programs and activities that create strong and thriving children and families. And whereas we acknowledge that we must work together as a community to increase awareness about child abuse and contribute to promote the social and, and emotional well being of children and families in a safe, stable, and nurturing environment. And whereas prevention remains the best defense for our children and families. Now, therefore, I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, do hereby proclaim April 2023 as National Child Abuse Prevention Month in the Township of Little Falls and urge all citizens to recognize this month by dedicating ourselves to the task of improving the quality of life for all children and families. And I want to thank you guys for joining us here this evening. I'm going to turn the microphone over to you for just a couple seconds to say a few words. I just want to say thank you so much to the mayor and council members for uh, recognizing uh, National Child Abuse Prevention Month and also the work that we do at Pasay County Casa. For the last 15 years, we've been recruiting and training volunteer advocates to be a voice for uh, children in the child welfare system who don't necessarily have people that, to advocate for them and fight for them. Um, so that, that, that's our goal, as we want to make sure every child in Passaic County that's in the child welfare system has someone to fight for them. And this is not why I'm here, but I do want to say congratulations to the athletic teams. Uh, youth athletics hold a special part, part in my heart, and uh, guys have fun and just enjoy it. Thank you for joining us. All right, now it's time for some celebrations. Celebrations of some winning sports teams here in Little Falls. And I know I see some familiar faces here and some individuals who have won in some other sports recently. And I think all of you know the routine. And that is after each of the coaches calls each of you up here, I need each one of these teams to come up with a very quick little cheer that you need to perform for everybody else that's here tonight, okay? So make sure you're coming up with one real quick. Oh yeah. So the first team that I'm gonna call up is coached by coach Dan Finlay and Ron Kreitzman, and I'm gonna ask them to join me up here and call up all their players. Uh, I guess this is the, we've been here to, this is the second time, uh, Ron and I enjoy what we do. You girls put in all the hard work and you guys should be proud of yourselves. We only teach how to play as a team. Um, I'm going to call you up by name and give you your medal. Okay. Kayla. Made a kill. Caitlin Preetsman. 
Adeline Mullane. Leila Zonka. Alice Brundage and Gianna Carroll. All right, girls, let's see what you got. Small but mighty, only five of them here. One, two, three, four. All right, congratulations. All right, so the next coach I'm going to call up coached the fifth and sixth grade girls and also happens to be a men's league champion himself this year. <laughs> and that is coach Jeremy Culver. It's been a pleasure coaching you girls this year. Um, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed all the you know, seeing you guys improve and uh, just letting you guys play. So we're going to start with Grace Murphy. Gabby Bez. Val Lopez. Bayan Hamden. Peyton Culver, Samantha Be McGinn, Dina Sucre, and come on. <laughs> Naya. What's up? No, that's it. That's everybody. Let's go. Get in there. Gather in. All right, and the last team we're going to call up this evening is our fifth and sixth grade boys. That was coached by Brian Callahan. Thank you. Uh, had a fun time this year. You guys were great. Great group of boys. Uh, really proud of you. Um, had a great assistant coach this year, Coach Ricky. Helped me out, and you know. Fun time. I only lost one game all year by one point. Yeah, now we'll, we'll get it again in two years. We'll get the same team back. We'll, we'll do it again. All right. First up is Max. 
Next up, Jean. Next up, Jonathan. Archie. Hamza. Alice. I think that's it. <laughs> Ryan Callahan, you're up. Thank you. All right, guys, let's see what you got. Congratulations. All right. This is the time where you are all certainly welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you would like to uh, make your way out, this is the time you can also do that. <laughs> The other part that this one is forward and center. You want you want to move? Yeah. 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 Very good. Oh, you're good. Mm. So the mics are on, right? We're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I have a motion to open the meeting to the public for general matters and agenda items. So, so, so moved by Councilman Vincherry, second by Councilman Murphy. This is a voice vote. Mrs. Krause. Oh, this is a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Mrs. Krause. Anyone wishing to address the Township Council may do so through the Council President. It is preferred if you give your name and address for the record. Comments are to be limited to three minutes. However, if appropriate, you may be granted additional time in the sole discretion of the Council President. Members of the public who have joined the meeting virtually and desire to provide comment shall raise their virtual hand in the Zoom application. 
The meeting moderator will cue the members of the public that wish to provide comment and the council president will recognize them in order. Members of the public who have joined the meeting by calling in must press star six to mute and unmute themselves and star nine to raise their hand. Members of the public who have joined the meeting via the Zoom application must click the reactions icon and then the raise hand icon. Once the process is complete, we will return to the regular order of business. Thank you, Mrs. Krauss. The floor is now open. Good evening, Andrew Baggett. Good evening. 78 Franklin Road, Denville, New Jersey. My little falls interest is 105 and 107 Main Street uh, between Center and Stevens. Is this general matters? Is this you can discuss this? Yeah, I would like to bring up uh, first of all to defend myself on the assault on my character that was made at the March 27th meeting last month at the one hour, 20 minute, and 30 second mark by Mayor James Belford Damiano. Uh, <clears throat> he has a lot of reasons to be angry and upset with me. I have called him out on not being notified of two ordinances that were presented here. And he denied at the March 27th meeting at the one hour and six minute and 30 second mark about being notified about a Browertown Road. And that can be found in the minutes of November 28, 2016 on page three. You also denied that you lived on Browertown. You said you didn't even live on Browertown, but you were notified and you said it was a county project. Even more reason why I should have been notified because the ordinances tonight affect my property and I was never notified. Uh, might come across as I am disrespectful it's a hard time to have a respect for somebody that wants to violate the law with ordinance 1341. If it was passed, would have been in violation of a state law on parking. And 40 semicolon 11 a line five line E. It says you can't take away parking when you have a place to present it somewhere else. And I'd like to ask Council Wenzel how an ordinance like that even gets written and brought in front of somebody when it's, if it is passed. So when somebody says you can't fight City Hall, here's the perfect example. You can present an ordinance, have it be in violation of the law, but as long as it's not passed, there's nothing I can do about it. So my attorney reckoned it to that someone broke into your house but they didn't take anything. So I would like Council Wenzel to let me know how that ordinance is comes about to be written. Mr. Baggett, are you addressing an ordinance 1351? No, 1341 from, this, from November 19th, 2018. We all know about it. It's the same as 1452. This was written four and a half years ago, and I wanna know how it came about being written if it's gonna violate a law if it's passed. Not only this, these meetings were the shortest time period between meetings. November 19th, 2018, it was moved back because of Veterans Day, and it was moved forward to December 17th. The shortest time period wasn't notified the ordinance is in violation of the state law if it's passed, and it's the shortest time period. I want to know how that is written. I have a question for the council. I pay my taxes. He pays the the questions come through the chair, Mr. Baggett. It's, it's well, up to my privilege if I want to direct that to the council at this time. Mr. Wenzel, do you have anything to, to share on this 1341 question? Uh, if I recall from five years, nearly five years ago, or four years ago at this point, uh, that this ordinance was was pulled. I don't believe that this ordinance was enacted. So um, I don't know what the issue with that one is, other than the fact that the ordinance wasn't enacted. I think Mr. Baggett has a certain view of the law, and I appreciate that. Everybody can have a personal view of the law. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, he is incorrect that uh, 1341 or 1452 are in any way in violation of any law. 
I think there was a decision which I can't speak to because it was a policy decision I believe made back in 2018 as to moving forward on that ordinance at the time. Um, so uh, that is the uh, some substance of that answer. It was written with the intent to pass it. And if it did pass, it would have been in violation of the parking law. And I wanna know how that comes about. Your name is on the purchase of two buildings on um, Stanley Street. Were, were you were we purchasing them to put clay playgrounds? Sorry, Mr. Baggett. Do you do, yeah, yeah, Mr. Baggett, I, yeah. Uh, this, Counselor, I know it's a tough uh, question, Ms. but, no, but Mr. Baggett, Baggett, go ahead, go ahead. Through Counselor, the chair. Through the chair, go ahead. Let us be clear with the language we use. When you say my name is on the purchase of two properties at Stanley, my name is on the purchases as an attorney for the township of Little Falls. And I want to be clear, I have nothing to do with any purchases of any property in Little Falls ever, let alone on Stanley Street. So I would ask that you kindly be careful with the wording you use, Mr. Baggett. I was involved with that as the township attorney representing the township buying properties, by the way, which I recall the purpose was, was to provide more parking for businesses downtown such as yours. How does that ordinance get written? If it was passed, so it was shelved. It was shelved on December 17th, 2018. And that just nullified it off. If, if it was passed, it would have been in violation of a state law on parking. And, and that's your opinion, sir. No, it's yes. not my opinion. Do you have any other questions? Sir? I, I, I have. So on December 17th, uh, getting back to the character assault by the mayor, uh, James Belford Damiano, on my character here, at that December 17th meeting, it was shelved. Two Boy Scouts got awards just like this evening. They waited around the whole hour meeting to ask why trees were cut down on Patterson Avenue. And the mayor blamed it on a water company project that was over in April of 2018. That water company notice is still on the webpage. You can go to your phone right now when the, when the, when the Little Falls page comes up, it's the top left thing uh, over there and it comes up with the water notification on there. So the mayor blamed it on a project that was over for uh, eight months. And then it comes out that John Vettery cut all the trees down without a site plan or without a tree removal plan. So he has a lot of reasons to be mad at me. And then in June of that year with his parking plan, I called him out about Mr. Sestones, about parking spaces with the uh, allotment for the bank here. So he assaulted my character and I come to defend myself here. Is that the end of your comment, sir? Uh, I just want to say that he said that I disrupt meetings and planning board meetings. Three, three planning board meetings. One was um, November 6th. 2020, February 6, November 2020. And how planning board runs, there's no video of it. It's a disc that you purchase if you want to hear from it. How people get recorded in the minutes are, if you're an architect, lawyer, attorney, traffic person, your name gets listed in that program. But when it, it comes to public comments, most of them are just put under a general uh, claim that the public came forth and mentioned traffic, noise, water, infrastructure, and all that. On the February 6, 2020 meeting, a planning board meeting, my name comes up and it quotes that Andrew Baggett commended Mr. Gaeta when he said enough is enough with the variances. So that is a, I didn't disrupt any meetings there. Valley Bank uh, in August of 2021 came up, I had a 
three, my turn came up. I had three questions. One was about lighting that was addressed. I had an emergency exit that they showed up and I had a property line building question that they brought forth. I commended the gentleman, Mr. Mecca, and I said, I look forward to being your neighbor. Never once did I put it down. Um, regarding Mr. Vettery's property, I have a newspaper article from the Passaic Valley today. And the meeting was in the March 21st of 2020, and then it followed up on March 2022, and it followed up on March 30th, 2022 was the final uh, of that meeting. I had a couple of questions, did not erupt the thing, never put anything down. I got on board right from the start. The very last little bit of this article here uh, from this newspaper is will defend my character a little bit. Andrew Baggett, who owns property at Long Main Street, says it looks like a nice project. How long will it take to complete? Vettery said the project will be built in several stages and may take two to three years to complete. We hope to break ground before the freeze, Vettery told Baggett. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baggett, for coming in this evening. However, I think we were at two different meetings. Mayor Damiano, would you like to comment since the Mr. Baggett has insinuated that you made certain references? No, I have no comment. Okay. Me. Does the council like to make any comments? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Can you just please lower the microphone a little bit for us? Name is Peggy over the 181 Long Hill Road. Good evening. And I'm here on behalf of the Little Falls Historical Society. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on April 23rd, 1921, the Little Falls National Bank, which is the PNC building, embedded a time capsule behind the carved 1921 cornerstone. And you can see the cornerstone, right? Big 1921. At the time, the reporter newspaper wrote that the time capsule contains much data, quote, which will be a great historical value in years to come. The box was soldered shut by John Jacobus, who owned a hardware store across the street from the bank. Mr. Jacobus' donation to the box was an 1826 silver half dollar. A few months ago, the Historical Society acquired the rights to the time capsule. We hired stone masons to go in and unearth it. And it's a rectangular box about this big copper, and it's soldered shut all the way around. So on October, on April 23rd, 2023, 102 years exactly later, the time capsule will be unsealed and opened at the Civic Center. Um, a stained glass studio who has a connection to Little Falls will unsolder the box and will open it up and show everything what's inside. Everybody is invited. Two o'clock, Civic Center, Sunday. Thank you so much for bringing that forth to us this evening. Hold on one second, Mr. Bag. Mr. Kusha, is there anyone in the chat that would like to come forward? The floor is still open. Yeah, uh, getting back to the agenda items. Today. I'm sorry, you have to say your name again. Andrew Baggett, 78 Franklin Road, Denver, New Jersey, 105 and 107 Main Street between Center and Stevens, Thank my you. little falls interest. Uh, could we get a full reading of Ordinance 1450? I don't know what you mean by a full reading. Well, just the whole, sir. whole explanation of it, the full reading of it. I just, you know, I have a couple concerns about it. And, uh, is, yeah, and uh, 1450, sir. 1450. If we could start with that one, a full full reading and an explanation of what it is like. Is there certain time periods that TARS are code, or if there's snow removal and somebody's car's been in there for three days? Uh, Mr. Baggett, it? when we come to that um, 1450, we will entertain public hearing and discuss it. Okay, so then I, I'm going to have one on each one of those going. That's down fine. We, we'll you'll come back. I can get yes. back up here. Thank when you. We, when we do those ordinances, you have a right to speak on them. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. All right. 
Mr. Kushi, anyone in the chat? Sir. Anyone else in the uh, audience would like to come forward? See no one else wants to come forward. Can I have a motion to close the public? So moved. Moved by Councilwoman Havlick. Second. Second by Councilman Venturi. All those in favor to close the public at this time, do so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, do so by saying nay. The motion carries. At this time, I'll ask Mayor Damiano to discuss resolutions one, two, three, and four. Thank you, Council President. At this time, we're going to uh, carry the first resolution. Uh, there was an error in the language on the uh, workshop uh, agenda here. It was supposed to be a resolution supporting the you text, you drive, you pay campaign. Uh, so we will have that prepared for the meeting next week. Uh, and we will ask just that the council essentially uh, not vote resolution A because it is not the drive sober or get pulled over uh, year end holiday crackdown. So we'll just Thank let you, that Mike. be skipped this evening. Um, as far as other issues uh, or items on the, uh, the agenda this evening. The next is the resolution approving the settlement funding for Steve May versus the Township of Little Falls. Uh, as has previously been discussed uh, a couple of occasions briefly, this was an employment practice liability case, which has now been settled. Um, there was an initial demand of $6 million. The case has been settled by the municipality for $775,000. The joint insurance fund is going to be covering $503,500, with the municipality's responsibility being $271,500. Um, the liability was reduced to a settlement of $775,000 because it was throughout the negotiation found that the township acted as appropriately as possible uh, throughout the entirety uh, of the issue as it was pending, uh, hence the significantly reduced settlement compared to what the initial demand was uh, by Mr. May. Uh, the $271,500 will be paid over a five-year period, and the Joint Insurance Fund will be paying the, the entirety of that amount up front. So the township has the benefit of paying the amount back to the GIF over a five-year period. So it'll cost us about $55,000 a year uh, in our budget as a payment towards the entire settlement of this uh, of this settlement. Uh, so that is what the budget will see over the next five years is a $55,000 amount added to it as a result of this settlement. That's item number two. Does the council have any questions or comments regarding the resolutions? Seeing none, I have a motion to approve resolutions. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Sorry if I do numbers three and four. Uh, or you want to do that? You want to approve yeah, those first? We can't. Um, we have to break this up, right? Sure. So it's um, how are we going to do this, Council? We're going to, we, um, Council President, if you want to, because the mayor just spoke about uh, uh, under his number two, your number B under action items. Obviously, number A or letter A is being removed. So A is being removed off the. So we go B. Just to B and B through. Uh, B and C. B and C. Okay. All right. Unless the council, unless the municipal council has any questions on B or C. So we're we're here to approve resolutions B and C at this time. Have um have uh with roll call actually. Let's have a roll call for B and C. Need a motion. Oh, do we need a motion? Yeah. All right. Have a motion to approve B and C. So moved. Moved by Councilman Venturi, second by Councilman Murphy. Now a roll call. Have a roll call to approve B and C. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Hablitz? Yes. Councilmember Vancheri? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. We'll move on. Mrs. Krause, please read ordinance 1450. Oh, Council President, do you want me to do items uh, three and four on the report? Go ahead. Yep. All right. Item number three on the report is ordinance number 1457. It's amending chapter 71, uh, which is for fees. It is for speed and agility camp fees. Uh, the township is looking to amend the current fees for speed and agility camp. Uh, and add fees uh, for that camp that we are looking to institute here in town. Uh, so we are looking to add that pursuant to uh, our chapter 71 fees uh, ordinance. Similarly, our ordinance in 1458 is amending chapter 71 fees. That is to allow for advertisements in the township calendar that the municipal council has discussed now on a couple of occasions uh, to allow us to accept the contributions and donations uh, to be included in the township municipal calendar uh, in years moving forward. And if I may, Council President, I have one other item that I'd like to discuss this evening that's not on the agenda itself, but that I would like to report on. Go ahead, Mayor. Sure. So uh, as of lately, uh, I have been approached on a, a number of, of occasions at this point by uh, individuals who have class five licenses uh, 
for cannabis. And for those that are not aware, a class five license is a license that allows uh, individuals to sell retail cannabis within the municipality. Uh, as we have discussed here on a number of occasions, Little Falls, when the opportunity presented, there are six types of licenses that are issued in the state of New Jersey, uh, literally called class one, two, three, four, five, and six licenses. Uh, initially, the township permitted one, two, three, four, and six to be uh, operated within our, I'll call it our Route 46 corridor, our Route 46 zone, our B2 zone. Uh, the class five license was one that we did not originally permit, and it was the council's position at the time, this is a year and a half, two years ago, that uh, there was some concern about how it would operate, how we, and, and really, uh, there was some desire to allow other towns to uh, really, uh, I guess, be the, the guinea pigs and see how they operated prior to allowing it here in Little Falls. Um, I know that now a couple of years have passed. I know that a, there's a handful of surrounding municipalities that have since permitted it. Uh, and there's a handful of surrounding municipalities that have put all sorts of restrictions and limitations in place, including allow it to be by appointment only, including allowing it to uh, be limited to certain times, including requiring that a police officer always be present when they're operating, uh, all sorts of things that to ease the uh, concerns of neighborhoods or to, a cons uh, you know, really residents within an entire municipality. Uh, and I guess what I am proposing here, and again, I, I, I have been clear from day one um, when this was originally discussed that, uh, you know, when there was, when it came up for the, the referendum for the vote, uh, you know, initially I was opposed to just the legalization of it because I thought it would be a nightmare for our, our police departments to, to have to enforce. Um, once it had become legal, uh, and I realized that neighboring communities would be allowing all of these class licenses to be permitted. Um, you know, if it's going to be legal, there's no reason that if it is a good business that not be permitted in the right zones here in Little Falls. And initially, there was some discussions about allowing some of the zones to uh, operate on Patterson Ave. I know we had concerns from a number of residents and that zone was eliminated. Um, but a, a couple of class five uh, licensees have approached me recently saying they would love for the council to hear them out on whether or not they would be the right license holder to operate uh, within our B2 zone, our Route 46 zone. So what I am proposing, Council President, is just some, and it doesn't need to be tonight, but from some future discussion uh, here amongst the council members, and maybe I can call each council member individually moving forward, to kind of determine whether or not we want to entertain a class five license along the Route 46 zone. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of our one, two, three, four, and six licenses. Uh, we have we permitted two initially uh, along Route 46. Maybe we want to start with just permitting one, if that's something to be considered, We or maybe not at all. But again, something that I think we can have some discussion on uh, as a council moving forward to determine if it is a good fit for the municipality. There are also tremendous financial benefits that come along with uh, allowing a class five license in town, such as uh, the 2% of the annual gross revenue is returned to the municipality uh, directly by the, the license holder. And there are some license holders in the, in the state of New Jersey now that are operating between 30 and $50 million a year annually. And 2% of that is a pretty uh, you know astronomical figure. Uh, so there is certainly uh, some, you know, considerations to be given. Uh, again, just something that I think this council should uh, have some discussion and consideration, uh, you know, moving forward uh, over the next uh, couple of months. Does the council have any comments or questions with what the mayor just brought forward this evening? I would suggest that the council go and seek uh, residents' opinions and do research and take a hard look at what was proposed uh, tonight. Um, I myself have visited a few of these establishments and have been very impressed on their efficiencies and the individuals purchasing uh, their products on how uh, easy it is and how, uh, how fast uh, the transactions occur and how the individuals um, actually kind of just know what they want. There's not much browsing. So it's very impressive um, on how some of these operations work. I encourage the council to do your homework and we'll have a further dialogue uh, in the near future. Thank you, Mayor. 
Ms. Krauss, can you please read ordinance 1450? Second reading and public hearing of ordinance number 1450, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township of Little Falls County Passaic State of New Jersey, further amending the Township of Little Falls Code, Chapter 7, Article 2, Section 7-40, Parking Prohibitions on Municipal and Board of Education Property. Thank you, Mrs. Cross. The public hearing on Ordinance 1450 is now open. Does anyone would wish to speak on Ordinance 1450? Andrew Baggett, 78 Franklin Road, Denville, New Jersey, 105-107 Main Street between Center and Street is my little false interest. Mr. Baggett, um, you don't need to, from now on, uh, to repeat your name. You could just come up and speak. Oh, I, I remember I, we're having problems with the minutes last time. They didn't get posted for five months yep. for addresses. Yep. That's right. I forgot. The, the address, you can eliminate the address. Just yeah, the yeah. Name, okay? I, I remember it was a five month problem last right. time. That's right. Could you, you have a question, further? sir? Yes. Could you go a little further in depth on ordinance 1450? No, I'm not going any further. Do you have any questions? But I want to know what. Do uh, you have any questions? Yeah. What time? What is your question? What times are the towing? What, when is it? What? What would what would cause somebody to be towed? It's in the ordinance, sir. Does anyone? Do well, I'm asking that it be read. I'm here to ask well, the question. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> counselor, is, you know, can you I mean, please read the entire ordinance? Uh, no, Mrs. Krause, read the ordinance 1450 in its entirety. If, if I may, I, I don't think the question so much pertains to the ordinance itself, because the ordinance itself references. Chapter 7, Article 2. And that ordinance, in my opinion, or is very clear as to the specifications that this is going to include. We're just adding two lots to the regulations, prohibitions, and permissions of those lots. And if you read Section 7, Article 2, it talks about parking prohibitions on municipal and board of education property. And it was originally amended on December 20th, 2004. It was then amended several other times to include additional lots. And we are simply adding two more lots to that particular portion of our ordinance. Could you clarify it's, like it's, times? It's, is it, back, is it's, it it's for fun. snow removal? I'm just asking for a slight clarification on it. That's all I mean. Is it that Art difficult? Article two is 15 minutes worth of reading. Thank you. But for the record, Mrs. Krause, read 1450, please. You want me to read the entire yes. ordinance? Yes. Thank you. Whereas due to concerns regarding the health and safety of motorists and pedestrians in the township, the municipal council of the township seeks to amend the provisions of the current code section. And whereas in furtherance of the proposed amendment to the township code of general ordinances the con concerning the parking vehicles on the township roadways, and whereas the municipal council has determined to amend chapter seven, article two, section 7-40.11 of the township code to read as follows. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Municipal Council of the Township of Little Falls, Passaic County, State of New Jersey, as follows. The, afore the aforesaid recitals are incorporated herein as though fully set forth at length. The Municipal Council hereby amends Chapter 7, Article 2, Section 7-40.11 of the Township Code to read as follows. Morris Canal, Stanley Street Parking Lot, entrance located on Stevens Avenue, Little Falls Sports and Recreation Center, parking lots located on Patterson Avenue, if any section, paragraph, subdivision, clause, sentence, phrase, or provision of this ordinance is declared unconstitutional or invalid by a court of competent jurisdiction, such decision shall not affect the remaining portions of this ordinance. A copy of this ordinance shall be available for public inspection at the offices of the township clerk. This ordinance shall take effect after 20 days of its final passage by the municipal council upon approval by the mayor and publication as required by law. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Mr. Kusha, does anyone wish to talk about 1450 in the chat? No, there is not. Okay. We're going to close uh, to public on 1450. Have a motion to adopt ordinance 1450. So moved. moved by Councilman Vincere, second by Councilman Havels. This is a roll call to adopt 1450. Please call the roll, Mrs. Cross. Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Havels? Yes. Council Member Vincere? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. Mrs. Krause, please read 1451. 
Second reading and public hearing of ordinance number 1451 an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the township council of the township of Little Falls in the county of Passaic state of New Jersey further amending the township of Little Falls code chapter 7 article 2 section 7-11 parking time limited on certain streets. Thank you. Public hearing on 1451 is now open. Mr. Crucia, is there anyone in the chat that would like to speak on 1451? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on 1451? Seeing none, we are going to close to 1451. I have a motion to adopt ordinance 1451. So moved. Moved by Councilman Murphy, second by Councilman Havlitz. Mrs. Krause, please call the roll for 1451. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Yes. Councilmember Van Cherry? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. At this time, Mrs. Krause, please read ordinance 1452. Second reading and public hearing of ordinance number 1452, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Little Falls in the County of Passaic, State of New Jersey, further amending the Township of Little Falls Code, Chapter 7, Article 1, Section 7-13, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets. Thank you. This evening, we have our township engineer with us. Um, Mike, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about your credentials? And he is a Little Falls resident. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Kobolars. I'm a um, graduate of New Jersey Institute of Technology, Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering. I've been a licensed engineer for 34 years now um, in both uh, private development and serving the public sector. Thank you, sir. Would you like to walk us through the ordinance 1452? You brought some. Um, Certainly. Diagrams. Um, this is in regards to the uh, southern side of uh, Main Street between Center Avenue and Stevens Avenue. Um, essentially, there was five uh, parking spaces that existed. Uh, along those uh, store frontages with the new Main Street project. Um, that is, those five spaces are being eliminated due to um, a widening of the uh, sidewalk area on the northern side in order to provide additional pedestrian uh, and, and more uh, open public space along those storefronts. By shifting that curb over into the roadway about two feet, um, we are shifting the center line of the roadway to accommodate that um, new curb line and to enable um, the existing eight parking spaces along that side of the roadway to remain. Thank you, sir. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, essentially, the curb line is being shifted over, but it will, as you approach uh, Stevens Avenue, it does come, the center line will come back to meet the existing center line of the roadway. So the uh, turning radius for any buses making the right-hand turn onto Stevens Ave will not be impacted. Thank you. Thank you for that report. The floor is now open uh, for 1452. So uh, before you start, maybe your uh, name, sir, Andrew Baggett, 78 Franklin Road, Denver, New Jersey, 105-107 Main Street is my little false interest. Um, so one of the things on the uh, north side of the street is going to be a handicapped spot will be replacing an existing spot. Actually, the, there, the number of spots will remain the same the handicap spot will be shifted closer to the uh, storefront. It'll be shifted more towards the corner, towards the crosswalk, uh, or uh, closer towards Stevens Avenue. It'll be actually the first space um, adjoining the storefront on the northern side. And then on the other end of it is going to be a loading spot. This is on the north side, past the canal lot. Is that... Uh, there, is that the loading? Is that where the loading spot is going to be added? There's no loading spot. There are 
space is about five foot um, in between some of the uh, jockey in there. Right, exactly. A, a, little, a little bit easier. But the number of spaces on the northerly side will remain the same, number of eight. Eight spaces. Eight, but one is going to be a handicap. Handicap, yeah, handicap. which currently exists now. It, it, but it's on the far end of it. Correct. Right, and that, that space is eight feet, nine inches, uh, which is nowhere near compliance with the county road measurements. So uh, the north side, the first spot, which is going to be the handicap spot now, may comply with the county's uh, road width, 11 foot one. And I don't think you've added the sidewalk doesn't go over that far. I don't believe so. That'll probably stay the same. The next spot's going away from the corner on out towards Center Street along the canal parking side, nine feet, six inches. Next spot, nine feet, six inches, does not comply with county minimum road width. Nine feet does not comply, nine feet, three inches, does not comply with the county minimum road width. No, the, the, the minimum just, uh, we have a, a, a revised plan that shows 11 foot as being the minimum uh, travel lane on yeah. the northern uh, side. Yep, is that, are they all gonna comply? Yes. Every, every all, all the new spots are gonna be comply. Yes, that's okay, correct. Because... Minimum uh, nine, nine foot width by 18 feet in length. Yes, but that's the size of the spot. I'm asking about the side from the double yellow line back to the spot. That's those Yes, the, the, that will be a minimum of 11 feet. Okay. Right now, the only legal spot is the one in front of the bus stop. It's 13 feet clear. And that, that one's going to be eliminated. The other one, the next one up coming towards Stevens is 11 feet, 11 inches. That one may comply with the county. It would comply, right? 11 feet, 11 would comply. 11 foot is the minimum. And, and the next one up, three, three of those spots that we're eliminating already comply with the county road. So it's a lesser move to move it this way here and eliminate the parking on the other side. And it's just every, every which way around, it works better. That uh, this, this ordinance work, works better every, every which way around. Regarding New Jersey Transit, I'm sure New Jersey Transit is delighted that something is being done. We all came forth on December 10th, 2018, and brought forth that we're firsthand experience on there that the mirrors are getting ripped off and something needed to be done. Uh, I know of two instances without even getting an open public record of two people that parked on the north side uh, in front of the canal lot there that they had their doors ripped off, a Miss Bassano and a Miss Cooper. And on the November 26, 2018 me minutes uh, meeting, Councilwoman Cordonaire says you take your life in your hands when you park on that spot. How we're doing this the wrong way, it is a public safety traffic issue, what is going on here. And New Jersey Transit, I'm sure, is delighted. But the better way to do this is to remove the parking on the north side, making the hazard clear of the left-hand turn, and making it easy for the bus to swing out and make the right-hand turn. It already, you said you're not moving it there at the uh, furthest point east there. It already crosses the line and it, it starts that process several feet back to swing around and go to the corner already. Every way around, this needs to go the other way. Every way around here. You can't make that turn, the right-hand turn without crossing over the line. School buses with Students, teachers, chaperones, and bus drivers at risk. It is a public safety traffic issue. Thank you. Mr. Krusha, is there anyone in the chat that would like to speak on 1542? Okay. I'm sorry, 1452. <clears throat> the public hearing on 1452 is now closed. I have a motion to adopt 1452. So moved. Moved by Councilman Ben Cherry. Second. Second by Councilwoman Havlitz. This is a roll call. Please call the roll on 1452. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Yes. Councilmember Vanchieri? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. Mrs. Krause, read ordinance 1453. 
Second reading and public hearing of ordinance number 1453, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Little Falls in the County of Passaic, State of New Jersey, further amending the Township of Little Falls Code, Chapter 7, Article 1, Section 7 21, some, excuse me, 29, handicap parking. Thank you. The floor is now open on 1453. Andrew Baggett, 78 Franklin Road, Denver, New Jersey, 105-107 Main Street is my little falls interest. Uh, I see that this one is going to move the handicap spot from one end to the other, right? This, this Correct. Closer to the storefront. So, yes. so With all these ordinances, all I keep hearing about is pedestrian friendly, pedestrian friendly. And when I came to the meeting on 1341 on November 26th, I drew a diagram that had the two spots in front of the bus left and a crosswalk. Is it, can we get anything with an additional crosswalk in here for the, for the, you know, I mean, it's just a public safety issue here. I know it hasn't been brought up, but all I hear about is public safety and, uh, you know, pedestrian friendly, and I don't see an additional crosswalk in here. You'd like to speak on the crosswalk issue? Sure. The new plan right there actually has an additional curb cut for a crosswalk to be added at Center Ave. So there'll be one at Stevens Ave as well as Center Ave now. What side of uh, Stevens will it be on the east side or west side? Okay. There's one on both sides at Stevens Ave currently. It will remain on no, both sides I, of Stevens I, Ave. I, it's gonna cross Main Street? Correct, there currently is a crossing on each side of Main Street at Stevens Ave, both the west and east side. And we will be adding one on the, where there are none currently exist at Center Ave. We will be adding one on what is the Eastern side at Center Ave now, because now if you come to Center Ave, the only crosswalk that is in the, on, on, on the, the asphalt, the closest one is at Stevens Ave. So rather than require that, you would now also be allowed to cross at Center Ave in a designated uh, crosswalk with appropriate curb cuts. So you, you'll be able to cross Main Street from center over across Main Street is what you're correct. Saying. Right. So thank you. Have your questions been answered? Sir? Yeah, I, th I think we're doing good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Takusha, anyone in the chat that'd like to come forth for 1453? Seeing no one else that would like to come forth on 1453, it is now closed to the public. I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 1453. So moved. Moved by Councilman Havlitz. Second. Second, Second by Councilman Ben Cherry. This is a roll call to adopt 1453. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Yes. Councilmember Vancheri? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. Mrs. Krause, please read Ordinance 1454. Second reading and public hearing of Ordinance Number 1454, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Little Falls in the County of Passaic, State of New Jersey, further amending the Township of Little Falls Code, Chapter 7, Article 1, Section 7 24, Loading Zone. Thank you, Mrs. Krause. <laughs> The public hearing on 1454 is now open. Mr. Kusha, anyone in the chat that'd like to speak on 1454? Sorry. Is there anyone in the council chambers that'd like to speak on 1454? Andrew Baggett, 78 Franklin Road, Denville, New Jersey, 105-107 Main Street between Center and Stevens is my Little Falls interest. Um, this spot is for commercial only? Is that... Is that how that is? If Ooh, that's that's well, is it, uh, Councillor? Does this ordinance read only for commercial, or can a, a business owner, um, if a business owner had goods in their trunk and they were going to uh, offload in that spot, would that be acceptable according to this, the language? Loading zones are normally for uh, commercial enterprises. They're meant for commercial enterprises, uh, but for loading. The way it's written is loading or unloading of goods and materials. Uh, it's not meant for someone who's parking there and uh, shopping in the area. So if it's someone who's uh, moving items in and out of a location, they would uh, be in compliance with that uh, part of your code. You're concerned to that, sir? Yeah, my residential tenants that now there's no place for them to park, no place for them to load groceries, bring laundry out. Um, also, I have a residential customer that uh, came here. He's still in there. Uh, Dan with the fabric out, out. He's off uh, outlet, fabric factory outlet. He's often uh, 
and I don't know if he has commercial plates on his vehicle, but he often loads rolls of fabric, has customers bring and drop off a chair. And uh, I have a concern for his business here. And why we don't have a spot on across the street for a, we didn't even save a spot in front of the bus stop or anything else for any any consideration for my tenants. But you know, here here it is across the street, the, the spot here. And I have a concern that it could be used for my residents, at least to get some laundry in and out and bring groceries in. I mean, <laughs> you know, you're strangling me over here. This this ordinance was developed <clears throat> for the businesses that were complaining that uh, the UPS truck or the FedEx truck, they couldn't get their goods or their goods that they were asking for. And there was no place for those vehicles to park. What's uh, can we consider getting some residents in there to be opening up to, there's not gonna be too many other people there that are gonna be wanting to use those spots. Oh, it's a uh, spot, sir. A, right. The a spot, thank you. It's okay. Uh, also, what was the time limit on that? I just. Is there a time limit, well, Councilor? Right in this station, you know, eight in the morning to eight, eight in the evening. For eight in the morning, eight half eight. an hour. I mean, is it you know, somebody he could bring his truck there and park for? I mean, is it a time limit? The, uh, Are you saying that uh, how long the UPS truck could be there and all? Yeah, yeah, I mean, is it going to rotate it's, around? It's, or whatever, it's, I mean? it's designed for loading, sir. It's designed for a UPS truck uh, to to offload. They're not going to be parking there all day. Right. So just, well, just mean, to be just to be clear, Mr. Baggett, and I, I, I understand the purpose of your question. Let me say this. A normal loading zone is meant for the activity undertaken by that vehicle, meaning the vehicle is arriving for the purposes of offloading or unloading goods. So in the sense that you brought up, in fact, with the uh, fabric or uh, um, store, uh, where that person was getting a delivery from uh, FedEx or a uh, enterprise, that truck or van, whatever it is, can park in that loading zone or any loading zone, uh, offload the goods, unload the goods, and be on their way. Uh, it is not meant for any type of long-term parking uh, that would be for anybody so even if that van were to arrive at let's say 10 o'clock in the morning uh it would be an issue if that van was there three hours later and there was no activity of unloading or offloading and that is the normal concept behind uh a loading zone sometimes uh there is uh i don't know if we have uh, I, I don't have it at the top of my uh fingers to answer you in terms of if there's a specific ordinance in place with the timing for any vehicle to be within a loading zone uh normally there is uh, most most uh ordinances in many other communities say uh have like a 15 minute or a, or a half an hour time frame uh, because they want to make it available for the next business because there's somebody else uh, that needs to use it. So um, to answer your question the best way I can is to say that it's for the use of onloading and offloading at that time, rather than for somebody to park there and then proceed to utilize the businesses downtown, visit their friend. I know that's not what you're talking about, but I'm just saying in general, that's not the purpose of, of a loading spot. Well, I, I have a concern for my tenants and, you know, the fabric factory is a commercial guy. Uh, he might not have commercial plates, but he parks in front and he unloads and has uh, a spot where other customers might be bringing a chair or something that he needs to unload and have convenient access to it. So I'm asking, I mean, it would be best if it was in front of the bus stop, but uh, if we have to settle for across the street, we'll fighting for anything we can to survive. Mr. Baggett, if the owner of your establishment had goods in his trunk or in his backseat of his car and offloaded it, that, that zone would, that's what he would use, but he couldn't park there all day. He'd have to offload no, he, he, and move along. Yes, but, that's but, what well, this is designed for, sir. I, I also have concerns for my tenants bringing groceries. It's not designed groceries. for that well, I mean, matter, sir. It's designed for business use. Well, there's no consideration for my tenants. There's no, nothing but, for my tenants to park and get in and out of the building or anything else here. 
Mr. Baggett, this ordinance addresses a loading zone. And I'm asking why we don't have one for my tenants and all of this. So you're asking, going on here. you're asking this council why we don't have parking for your tenants. At, I, we, we already know what's going on here with the park. So I'm asking I, that a consideration for a loading spot for them to get, bring groceries in and out, uh, laundry in and out, whatever. I mean, just to, how is somebody going to survive? There's not one consideration for one of my tenants here. But the bus stop is, like I just said, 13 feet clear. And I'm sure the road measurements are going to leave plenty of room there for a spot. I'm in here fighting for my life, my tenants. I've paid taxes here over 30 years. And I'm getting strangled here for my location, where it is. And I think a lot of people are aware of what's going on here. And I am begging for a little mercy here, something, consideration for something here for my tenants. I don't think I'm calling for all that much here. I'm fighting for my life, my livelihood that I put my heart and soul to. It's been in my wife's family for over a hundred years. Does the council member have any questions or comments regarding the residents' uh, concerns about parking? Council President, can I- Through the floor, okay. Councilman okay. Bencherry. Mr. Baggett. Okay, so your building is on Main Street. It does not come with any parking for anyone. You have to use a township parking correct but what your resident can park on center avenue and can walk over i mean it may not be the perfect spot right in front of the building but the reality is you don't have a parking spot with your building well so you're eliminating you're it and the, and, and the one bus spot in front of the bus is 13 feet no matter how far you move the line i'm sure it's going to be in compliance on center street it's not even there isn't any parking from the corner of the library stanley warren all the way down to Main Street. There's no parking on that there's, side. I, there's, there's, limited. Good, there's parking. There is parking there. And what did you do for a long time? There was no overnight parking. Where did your tenants park then? What did you do when there was no overnight parking on Main Street, for example? Parked in the bank lot. Okay. But no, nope, nobody ever got ticketed. Nobody ever had a problem. So, and there wasn't uh, an issue. You see where I got it. Uh, 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 we're gonna we'll keep addressing this as long as you Feel like your questions aren't being answered no i just i don't want to yeah. harp on something i'm looking for a loading spot to a little savior here in front of the bus stop. But, uh, right. here's the issue. But, one second mayor i'll be right with you okay. but the loading spot sir is different than a parking spot well, this loading spot addresses the concern of the main street well, businesses that have issues that the ups trucks the fedex trucks and etc that they can't get their goods so they that's why this was established mayor Sure. And I, I'm, I'm going to refer to the engineer here. Just because there's room in front of where a bus stop technically ends, a bus cannot then turn its wheels 90 degrees, travel back out into the lane of travel, and continue forward. What I mean by that is if a bus is stopped along a curb to, and it picks people up or drops people off, it then needs to continue in a straight line, meaning you can't put a parking space directly in front of where a bus stop ends. And I'm gonna refer to the engineer here, but I don't know how much room a bus would need, but I can almost guarantee you that there is no point along Main Street where this streetscape is, where we have enough room to have two 11 foot lanes plus two nine foot parking spaces, where there would even be adequate space for a bus to get around a parking space if it were placed there. And I'm gonna refer to the engineer here, because uh, there's a lot of numbers on these, and I'm pretty good at reading them, but yes, I, no, that I'm is gonna... correct. And and the um, width of the southerly uh, side, um, going in easterly direction, in the bus lane and at the bus stop is 11 feet with the new uh, stripe. It, it's been doing it for years. It's been bus has been thrown out of there. It's going to be narrowed to 11 feet now. The number 11 bus that comes out of uh, Willowbrook makes 231 trips a week, one way to Newark, and then from Newark Penn Station back. That is not including the 191, the 28, or the 704. Um, they've been doing this all along here. There's, pl there's plenty of room there. I'm, I'm Currently, there's enough room to do it with the new alignment. Uh, it, 
it's going to be narrowed to only 11 feet, which will not allow for parking on the southern side. Mr. Kirchhoff, excuse me, sir. Mr. Kirchhoff, can you please give this to the resident? Yes. This is the same, Mr. Baggett, what's on the uh, illustrations. Can I keep that? Yes, sir. Get a copy of it? Yes, sir. Uh, just any anything we can do for uh, uh, my tenants there, a, a commercial spot, loading thing, whatever. He has a business there, and it's going to be that much more difficult to run. It's a nice business in town. He's looking forward to all the new uh, apartments coming in that people will be looking to uh, shop in his store. And uh, that, that's that's what I'm pleading for here. Mr. Baggett, you heard the mayor talk about four new establishments that came into town. We are pro-business. All the council members here are pro-business along with the mayor. Uh, we look to encourage uh, residents to, to shop in town. And that's why we're doing the streetscapes. That's why we spent the economic resources to do parking is so that we would drive economics for our local businesses. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Cruz. Nope. No, okay. Oh, yep. Sorry. Your name? That's okay. Marion Lizzie Baggett. Yep. Keep mm -hmm. going. You got that? Cynthia? You have it? Okay. Very good. 78 Franklin Road, Denville, New Jersey. Good evening. Uh, my same interest, 105, 107 Main Street. And it, it, being, I know the last time I was here, uh, the mayor had said that our building out of all the buildings on Main Street are the only ones that after all these years have had to rely on public parking, that we don't have public parking. All the, all the others or have parking that come with the building and all the other buildings on Main Street do. And when it comes time to rent their units, they can tell them where to park. And all these years we've had to scramble, but at least there's been, when I had my business, I really relied on that, you know, main street. I, to be bringing my props across the street, even if there was a loading dock right across the street would have been pretty difficult. And you might've had to do that. And I used to have to get up at, you know, before any people came and parked on main street to, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky being there. It's always been tricky being there. And, we don't own the spots, they're not our spots, but I look at things that are grandfather. I, look, I drive by Great Notch Inn and I'm like, well, there's an old building. There's an old building that's been paying taxes. They built an entire highway around that building. We're asking for, you know, three parking spots. I don't think it's like, you know, basically what it would be would be to take the parking away from the other side of the street I know that you talked about widening the sidewalks and certainly the sidewalks in certain places do have to be widened, but really all over these years, I have never heard anybody say, you know, Little Falls would be a great town to shop in if only they had wider sidewalks. What, what I've always heard is Little Falls really has a parking problem, really has a, so, my husband has been the mayor of the broke the broken side mirrors. He's out there every time we're sweeping sidewalks. We see somebody pull up. We tell him, "Hey, pull your side mirror in." We're aware that road has to be widened. Something has to be done. I don't think what we've proposed is really that difficult. It would be to move the the line to the other in the other direction, which would allow the bus to put we. I don't know if Mr. Murphy, do you, do you remember I sent a few pictures of the bus turning? Did you see yeah. how that bus has to swing? And all day long, all day long that bus comes. And I think with moving the line, you'd still be able to move this, widen the sidewalks, <coughs> widen the street. You'd eliminate parking and be able to still create your parking where you're going to create it. And I think it wouldn't, I don't think the other people on the other side of the street are gonna be affected negatively by that parking as much as our side of the street. So that's all we've been here to ask over all these many months. So I, as you know, are you, you're finished with your comments? I'm sorry, I didn't wanna interrupt. So as you know, the sidewalk has been widened on, let's say on Tony's Pizzeria side, because that's what everybody's familiar with, right? 
So the sidewalk has been widened there. And as you can see now with that, if you were to park on that side and park on the other side, maybe it'd be one lane of traffic. Um, and as far as no one complaining about sidewalks, government looks to make the community a better place. We were granted with grants and that sidewalk, as you know, was tight. It was a, a narrow area Definitely to walk. Okay. Area. So now with that being widening, it makes it much more pleasant to walk to people um, in that area. Um, and I know, you know, your concerns about losing parking spaces and your tenants having an issue that, but we've supplied parking uh, at a municipal lot for your tenants, as your husband mentioned that even this evening, when there was no parking, uh, overnight parking that they parked in the bank lot, you know, so we do have now a place for those re uh, tenants to park. Would the council like to add or have any comments? Council President, if I may. Yes, Councilman Murphy. Uh, Mrs. Baggett, I just want to go back to, I know you had uh, emailed myself and Councilman Patel, and so I know the concern was public safety. And so, you know, Councilman and I uh, requested from the mayor if they could pull a, a public safety report of any crashes in that area with buses. And so what we had found is we asked them to go back five years, and the only, only one accident had occurred where that bus took a left-hand turn, and the driver stated that he simply just, did, the, the bus stated they simply just did not see the car where it was on Main Street. And I know you had also emailed me and said, you know, uh, the buses make uh, approximately 462 turns per week. If you do that math, it's 100, over 120,000 turns in the past five years with one accident. So the data just does not show that there is a public safety issue in that intersection. If it was, we would see a much more uh, higher amount of accidents occurring there. So we can't we can't have comments from this. Well, all due, all due respect, Mr. Bagger, we have to just have one speaker at a time. Okay, I'm I'm finished. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments, yeah, Mayor. Would you like I, to follow up with one final comment? The, the the one thing that so the bottom line is here with the widening and safety of the sidewalk. Uh, we were permitted to have two lanes of travel with one side of the street parking, and the choice had to be made: should parking be permitted on the north side of the street? or the south side of the street. And in consultation with the engineer, it was determined because of where the bus stop is on the south side of the street, that there would be four or five spaces that would be able to fit on the south side of the street, where now we're able to fit eight spaces on the north side of the street. So the determination Mayor, excuse me, here- the reference, can you reference what north and south is? So the residents sure. know. The Valley National side is the south side. The Tony's Pizza side is the north side. Um, and what the residents are requesting or the property owners are requesting is that parking be permitted on the south side of the street rather than the north side. But the issue here is that in maximizing parking, and just as you heard, one of the single biggest concerns that they have heard over the years, as well as I and all of you as council members have heard, is there's not enough parking. To allow the parking to be on the south side of the road right now, would be doing a disservice to the members of this community because we would be literally cutting an additional three or four parking spaces in the immediate downtown vicinity where these where these business owners own their 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 business and again this is not an easy decision unfortunately the main street that we have here in little falls is 30 feet wide roughly we are dealt with the cards of a 30 foot wide main street where other towns have a 50 or 60 foot wide main street. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we have two lanes of travel with and one side parking. And in maximizing the parking, the one of the biggest concerns we have in order to accomplish that, having parking on the north side was the only real option here uh, to accomplish that goal. And that's how the decision was made in consultation with the engineer. And that's what was proposed. And that is what is up for again, adoption this evening. Does the council have any other questions or comments that they'd like to make? Mike, do you have anything else you'd like to add to this conversation? Nothing further. Is there anyone in the chat, Mr. Crucio? No, sir. Seeing no one else in our council chambers, I'd like to come forth on 50, 1454. The public hearing on 1454 is now closed. I have a motion to adopt 1454. So moved. Moved by Councilman Venceri. Second. Second by Councilwoman Havlitz. This is a roll call to adopt 1454. 
Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Havlitz? Yes. Council Member Vanchieri? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. Mrs. Krause, at this time, please read 1455. Second reading and public hearing of ordinance number 1455, an ordinance entitled calendar year 2023 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget cost of living allowance and to exceed uh, to establish a cap bank. Thank you. The floor is now open for 1455. Mr. Kusha, anyone in the chat? Is there anyone like to come forth in the audience on 1455? Seeing no one it is now closed to the public on 1455. Have a motion to adopt 1455. So moved. Moved by Councilman Murphy. Second. Second by Councilman Vincheri. Please call the roll, Mrs. Krause, on 1455. Councilmember Murphy. Yes. Councilmember Havlitz. Yes. Councilmember Vincheri. Yes. Council President Scoba. Yes. Mrs. Krause, at this time, please read 1456. Second reading and public hearing of ordinance number 1456, an ordinance entitled An Ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Little Falls in the County Passaic State of New Jersey to amend chapter seven on street regulations of the code of the township of Little Falls. Thank you. The public um, floor is now open on 1456. Mr. Kusha, is anyone in the chat? Is there anyone in our council chambers? I'd like to come forth on 1456. Seeing no one is now closed for 1456. I have a motion to approve Adopt 1456. So moved. So moved by Councilman Vancheri, second by Councilman Havlitz. Mrs. Krauss, call the roll on 1456. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Yes. Councilmember Vancheri? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. At this time, Mrs. Krauss, please read 1457. Introduction of Ordinance Number 1457, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Little Falls in the County of Passaic, State of New Jersey, amending the Township Code, Chapter 71 fees, with a second reading and public hearing scheduled for May 8th, 2023. I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 1457. So moved. Moved by Councilman Vincheri. So moved. So second, second, that's okay. <laughs> second by Councilman Murphy. Please call the roll to uh, introduce 1457. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Yes. Councilmember Vincheri? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. Please read Ordinance 1458. Introduction of Ordinance Number 1458, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Little Falls in the County of Passaic, State of New Jersey, amending the Township Code Chapter 71 fees with a second reading and public hearing scheduled for May 8th, 2023. Thank you. I have a motion uh, to introduce 1458. So moved. Moved by Councilman Vincheri. Second. Second by Councilwoman Havlitz. Mrs. Krause, call the roll to introduce 1458. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Yes. Councilmember Vancheri? Yes. Council President Scova? Yes. <clears throat> we'll move on to Councilmember reports. Chief Pro, you have anything for this government body this evening? Councilwoman Havlitz? Thank you, Council President. Uh, so first, I'd like to uh, thank the library for hosting um, START, which is uh, Animal Rescue and Adoption this weekend. Um, they had their uh, annual animal um, cat adoption and used clothing drive. Uh, myself and my fellow council members um, attended and stopped by, and it was a very well attended event. Uh, I hope they had some adoptions that day. Um, some upcoming events at the library. Uh, please remember there is voting for your favorite Peeps diorama going on through April 22nd. The winner will be announced at the Mystery Reader Story Time on April 26th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, that is also National Library Week, so stop by your library and support all the things that the library has to offer. Uh, we'll the library will continue their uh, cookbook club on April 24th at 7 p.m. This month's topic is cooking with bacon, uh, so bring your bacon recipe and bacon dish and uh, sample with the other uh, people participating in the club, uh, but you do have to register on the library website. Uh, lastly, the library will be celebrating Earth Day this Saturday, the 22nd at 1 p.m. Uh, with uh, plant pro uh, propagation uh, with the master gardener, Pete Tomasi. It's a hands-on workshop for growing plants from cutting. So that should be really interesting for your Earth Day activities. Um, it's gonna be a busy weekend here in Little Falls. Uh, Saturday is also our Earth Day sh uh, shredding event. 
It will be here at Town Hall from nine to one. It's a shredding and electronic recycling event. Uh, so get your spring cleaning going. Our Little Falls Police Department will also be there hosting the, D the DEA National uh, Take Back Safety Disposal of uh, Unused Medications from 10 to two. Uh, lastly, I just wanna remind everyone of a new event that's coming up, uh, part of our Mayor's Wellness Campaign, uh, which is our first annual bike rodeo, which will be Saturday, May the 6th from nine to 11. Uh, there'll be bike and helmet checks and obstacle course and much more. Uh, the route will start at school number one and end at town hall parking lot. Uh, there is no fee for residents, uh, but we do ask that you register through community pass so we can get an idea of how many people are coming because uh, there will be giveaways. Um, I'm really thrilled that we're able to uh, get this together. A thank you to uh, Tyler at the recreation department. Thank you to the Little Falls Police Department that will be helping out that day. And thank you to one of our local bike shops, the Loose Wheel, who will be there as a sponsor and doing some of the checks. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that great report. Uh, Councilman Murphy, floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. So we had a uh, domestic violence uh, prevention committee meeting last uh, Tuesday, um, and we have some uh, really great fundraisers we're looking to put forth. Um, so some of the ideas that we discussed, we're doing a dine and donate at some local restaurants. So we're talking to some restaurants now, trying to get them to participate in doing some nights in October where we can raise some funds. Uh, we're also looking to partner with some local salons um, an idea was brought up to put a purple streak in the hair. So, you know, that's an awesome idea that we're also looking to partner with. Um, and we're also looking to do potentially a cornhole or a, a pickleball tournament. So we have some really good uh, uh, ideas coming up for fundraisers. So definitely keep an eye on our town calendar um, for those that uh, are coming up. We'll be picking some dates for them. Uh, also, the 29th of April, uh, Passaic County Domestic and Sexual Violence Walk will be taking place at Garrett Mountain. Registration starts at 9 a.m. I know myself and some other of the Domestic Violence Prevention Committee members will be there as well. So uh, definitely event to come, a good event to come check out. Uh, speaking on events, we did present 1458 tonight, which is the uh, ordinance allowing fees for um, advertisements in our town calendar for 2024. So if this is something anyone's interested in, any businesses and advertising for, definitely reach out to John Pace, the Little Falls Rec Center. Um, this is something that's gonna go to every door in Little Falls, every business, and it's a great way to advertise and, and it's a great way to uh, contribute to the community and get your business recognized as well. Um, other than that, I did have a quick question. Uh, I know uh, somebody reached out to me in regard to planning board meetings, uh, council president. I don't know if uh, it's possible if we could potentially post them or if we could do a hybrid. I know we switched to just in person now. Is that a question regarding uh, the, the way the meeting is uh, taped or the, what's the question regarding the minutes? Yeah, I believe it was just virtual and I think now it's just in person. So I know our council meetings are half in person, half uh, uh, virtual. So I just wanted right. to see if we can. So at, at the current time, uh, the chairman of the planning board, Mr. Walter Kirkpatrick, is now holding the meetings in person. Uh, they are not uh, published as we do with our council meetings uh, that individuals can see the uh, tape because they're not taped. Um, that is also a courtesy of what we do with our council meetings. Uh, could could that happen in the future? Well, that's a dialogue. Maybe we'll have with the chairman and say sure uh, that um, was the question. Also regarding is are the is the planning board going to do a hybrid? Was that also your yeah, question? Yeah, I guess either a hybrid or if they're going to post it on YouTube, right. like we okay. do, either or. So I think uh, we can have a discussion uh, through the mayor uh, to Mr. Kilpatrick, the planning board chair, and see if he would be open to. Uh, having a hybrid meeting and, and also, um, I don't know the issues about taping the meeting. We'd have to explore that. Right, okay, yeah. awesome. Do you have Thank any you. other questions? That's all I have, Council Anything about the Peckman? You, uh, no, uh, good, I'm good. good? Yep. Okay, very good. Councilman Venturi. Thanks, Council President. I have a bunch of updates, so bear with me. It's almost like bird watching. Just hang out, be uh, patient. So there's a lot going on. Uh, this week, um, you know, we kick off a lot of different activities, and I want to mention some of them. But first, I want to you know say thanks to the three teams that came in here today. Some of us on the council and the mayor had a chance to attend some of the championship games. So it, it's nice to see a consistency with these programs. The kids are learning, and they're actually winning, and we get the chance to honor them. Um, this week, a number of different sports activities kicked off. You know, yesterday I had a chance to uh, stop by Sake Valley High School, where the um, our rec department kicked off a new program called Heroes in Training, and it's a program for pre-K and second grade, uh, up to second grade, 
and it's hosted by Gary and Colleen Fernandez, who are the owners of Final Round in town. So it's a new program designed to get the kids active at that age. And, you know, I have to say, seeing this set up yesterday for a little bit and then talking to a bunch of the parents that signed up their children, they were very happy. So kudos to the rec department for pulling this together. And, you know, I think what happens a lot is, you know, we come up with these ideas, everyone's looking to copy. And some of the comments on social media were directed at other towns saying, hey, you should do this as well. So it's nice to see. And uh, the rest of the program for track and field for third grade to eighth is going to be run by Sake Valley High School this year. It's great that the track and field team uh, coaches, as well as their athletes, are going to work with the youth at the third and eighth grade level. And it was also opened up by the rec department to Woodland Park and Totowa. So it's a nice way to sort of build a feeder program. That's something that in the athletics in town, you know, a lot of the uh, different teams want to do that. So as they get older and go to high school, so excited for that. Also, uh, baseball and softball mm -hmm. kick off this week, uh, as well as uh, women's and men's softball. And this Saturday mm -hmm. at 9 a.m., there is going to be a parade in town. So there will be some updates that are going to come through through the email blast. Um, the opening day parade for baseball and softball is going to take place at 9 a.m. Everyone's going to meet up at School One and then march down Stevens Ave, hook a right onto Main Street, and then a quick left onto Patterson Ave, where the athletes will walk down to the field and then Around 9.30, 9.45, the opening day ceremonies will take place. Um, each of the teams will be acknowledged as well as their sponsors. And, you know, the rec department is working on someone throwing out the first pitch. So hint, hint, mayor, get ready just in case, you know, make sure you don't bounce it. You're never going to hear it from me. But um, you know, just a lot going on there. Um, also this weekend, if you didn't see it, Sake Valley High School is doing their fifth annual autism awareness walk from 9 to 12 at uh, Sake Valley High School at the track. Anyone is interested in um, signing up, it's $5 registration free now. The day of the event is $7. It, it's a great way to have uh, everyone come together for a good cause. As everyone knows, uh, April is Autism Awareness Month. <clears throat> a few other events that are coming up as you start to see some signage uh, appear around town, uh, as well as on the uh, marquee at the rec. Memorial Day weekend is coming up soon. On Friday, um, May 26th at 5.30 p.m., we are going to have our annual concert in the park. Um, we're looking at three local bands with Little Falls residents involved. We have uh, Joe Morano, John Morano, I'm sorry, in the accents is playing. Paul Ostrowski, who lives in Little Falls as well, his band and knockoffs. And everyone knows Stella Crispo um, in the name of love is also going to be a part of this. I have right now four food trucks, also have uh, the Falls Creamery and a Taco Affair confirmed and what I'm also doing, and we've done this previously, any organizations, vendors, clubs looking to have a table, we are going to set that up. Last year, we had around 22 tables. So anyone that's interested, please reach out. The flyers are there. It'll be another fun night. The next day is the annual Memorial Day Parade at 10 a.m. That takes place on Main Street. We marched from the American Legion all the way down to Wilmore Road Park. Um, and then immediately following around 1130 or so will be the Memorial Day services hosted by the American Legion. I am working on getting together with Herb Richta, who is the commander at uh, American Legion Post 108, as well as Chief Post and Ronnie Campbell from the, the DPW. Just want to coordinate some activities for um, the parade, you know, during the parade and post parade. So I'm looking forward to having that meeting in the next week or two, just waiting on Herb's availability, but Chief will be in touch about that. So always got to make sure we got a perfect parade, no traffic, no issues. Um, I also got to put some kudos together for uh, members of the Little Falls Township that work here, uh, Mr. DeMaria and Mr. Campbell. Recently, a resident on Alita had reached out with a request regarding an issue with his property versus where the American Legion is and also where the water company is. So based on that, we set up a time where everyone came out and it was a good conversation. Everyone knew what needed to be done. And it's just another example. If you do have a concern, come to us. We're going to look into it and we're going to find the right person to help you know, answer those questions. I also, um, you know, Chief uh, Prawl, I want to give kudos to you as well as Officer Panola. We had an issue recently where a resident reached out about uh, something on Ridge Road. And last week, uh, myself and Officer Panola went out there and met with the resident as well as his next door neighbor to address the issue. And we connected with the county as well with Commissioner Bartlett and the engineers. And they're going to come out there as well because it had to do with the issue with the guardrail that's over there. It was unfortunately damaged in an accident that was nearby and just some other things that we want to do in terms of checking uh, the radar. So really appreciate uh, the fast action where it was on the phone with Officer Panola. Hey, you want to take a ride up there? Let's go. Let's do it. So thank you for that. 
Also want to thank uh, Commissioner Bartlett. I know, Mayor, you posted this uh, a few days ago. You know, it, we had a meeting recently with the Transportation Committee, and we were talking about the issue with the traffic light at Four Corners and Route 23. And Commissioner Bartlett said, you know, have the mayor send the information over. Let me see what I can do. And, you know, happy to say that there was progress and more time was added to the traffic light. And it looks like more studies are taking place and hopefully other changes are going to be made. Again, it's just, you know, there's an issue. We look into it and hopefully things get done. A couple other ones I told you, it's like bird watching. There's a lot going on. Um, the uh, had a chance to connect with the Little Falls Historical Society. Um, John, Mr. John Vettery and George Eaton helped out. A resident had reached out about, uh, some history uh, related to Duva Field and was able to find some of that background that we need. And it's something, uh, Council President, I'm going to present to the mayor and council at some point, just putting all the details together. But just wanted to give you a heads up. And just, again, another opportunity where you know, we're able to find out an answer. Also, um, a resident had reached out about the 9-11 uh, Memorial. You know, each year we do the services on September 11th. And the 9-11 Memorial Museum has a seedling program where a town that has a memorial for those that were lost on September 11th, and we have one obviously for the two residents that we lost, we can apply um, for the seedling of one of the uh, survivor trees in the World Trade Center. So the resident and I had a chance to connect with the 9-11 Memorial and Museum Commission, and we submitted an application and we're supposed to hear back at some point this year. So that can be an opportunity where we can add a seedling to Wilmore Road. Um, just some, a couple more items. I'm almost done. I had a lot going on, guys. Sorry. Um, last week, we had a transportation meeting. We had a chance to meet, and Officer Panola was in attendance as well. We talked about a few um, pressing items that we've been getting some um, questions around. And, Mayor, it's something that you know we've talked about previously with the residents on Houston. You know, it's come up again, um, you know, about the possibility of entertaining speed humps like we have on other roads. So what I want to do is just work with you, and we can maybe set up some time with uh, also um, Chief Crawl to have uh, you know a meeting on the street like we've done previously to discuss some of the options and concerns. And I did ask, uh, I think uh, Chief Officer Panola you know, conveyed this to you as well, just to pull some data so we have the most latest and greatest as it relates to Houston. So more to come on that. And then the other thing too, we talked about, we followed up with Commissioner Bartlett is one of the items that we've talked about for a number of years was addressing the speed limit on county roads because there are three county roads, Ridge, uh, Stevens and Maine, you know, parts of Long Hill, that the uh, speed limit can go from 25 to 35. And we were looking to be consistent uh, from a 25 mile per hour standpoint. And we had talked about pulling an ordinance together and the council president, that's something we can do because uh, Commissioner Bartlett let us know if we are to put an ordinance together on our end and do the necessary paperwork, it will then go on the county's agenda for review and approval, and then we can eventually adopt it. So it's something else that we're looking to do as well. And I think that's everything. So I'm good. <laughs> Told you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Vincere. You mentioned bird watching twice. I, I, so I, I saw something I came across that we have a resident that is actually raising money by bird watching. Do you yes. know about that? Yes, we Would do. you like to talk about that uh, I think for a moment? I, I think he's on the line too. So he probably got a kick out of you mentioning bird watching. Um, Tom Barone, who's the owner of the Falls Creamery, and he'll probably want to come on the public portion and talk about this. He is raising some funds as part of a bird watching project that's coming up. So it, it's uh, something different and uh, we're excited for him. I know it's really not much to it when it comes to bird watching. You just basically wait and you take pictures. So, Mr. Brown, can you hear? Uh, Mr. Kusha, can you see if Mr. Brown can? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brown, how are you? Good evening. Mr. Brown, can you hear us? Oh, I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much. Would you like to tell this uh, governing body and the residents that are listening about bird watching fundraising? <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's actually called the World Series of Birding. I don't want to brag too much, uh, but I am participating in the World Series. We are sponsored by Falls Creamery, our ice cream parlor. Uh, the clever name we chose was the Mint Chocolate Chirps. Yes, you're all allowed to laugh. That's a great name. Uh, there's not much to it. It's on May 13th. It's 24 hours from High Point, New Jersey, down to Cape May. And whichever team spots the most birds wins. Okay. Thank you, sir. I wish you the best of luck with it. Yes. If you tell us what there is, the money is going to a cause, though, that, that you raised from the fundraising, correct? It is. Thank you. Yes. Every penny of it goes to the Pacific River Coalition. So we're excited about that. 
uh, people who want to donate money, great. You could either just give money or you could bet, you know, you could, I almost said bet, like it's sports betting. You could uh, pledge to the bird and say, hey, if we see 120 birds, we're giving you 50 cents per bird, whatever the case may be. Uh, there'll be more to come on that, but we're excited about it. Thank you, sir. Wish you all the best to it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, those chairs of the following committee, Senior Advisory, Domestic Violence, Transportation, Finance Committee, Open Space, Pacific River Advisory, School Liaison, and Public Safety. If you are going to have new members on your committee, working members, not just visiting members that just come to your meetings, please submit their name to the Council President. After they're vetted from me and they're accepted, then they'll go on the agenda. Uh, spring Fling is coming up. April 22nd, Saturday night, 5.30. Looks like John Morano is going to be a little busy because he's playing with the accents for us. Uh, we're going to be having some Penna Anthony, some Broccoli Rob, and some meatballs uh, from the restaurant. Bella Nota. But thank you, Bella Nota. Thank you. We have a lot of Italian restaurants in Little Falls. And from Bella Nota. Looking forward to it. If you'd like to attend, please reach out to me. Um, we have some more seats, so please reach out to me or reach out to Tyler at the rec or call the town hall. Does any council members have anything else they'd like to add before we move on? Mayor, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, you know what, the only thing I would like to mention and Councilman and Sherry uh, touched upon it, uh, you know, traffic has always been one of the larger complaints that I've gotten uh, over the past handful of years. Um, and I've always felt that traffic in Little Falls is not created by Little Falls residents. It is created by people who are passing through Little Falls, using Little Falls as a cut through. And we had one intersection in town that was sort of our Achilles because it was the one that we didn't have control over ourselves. And it was the Route 23 and Main Street intersection. And we didn't have control over it because it's the DOT, the Department of Transportation that controlled the traffic control time box there uh, and would not allow us to unilaterally make modifications to it. Where Stevens Ave, uh, and uh, Main Street at Main Street and Union Ave at Main Street, the county, although they're county roads, the county has allowed us to control the, tra the traffic control timing box uh, under the uh, pretense that, you know, it's the traffic that is in Little Falls, so we should deal with it ourselves. And we were always allowed to make modifications. After two years now of back and forth with the DOT, uh, with the assistance of our freeholders, uh, John Bartlett and Sandy Lazara here from Little Falls, uh, they were able to get us across the finish line in making some actually really, really substantial and significant timing changes to the uh, traffic controller there at that intersection. And uh, I actually, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I had to go through that intersection a whole bunch of times this past weekend. And it was incredible how just leaving a light green for 10 or 12 more seconds uh, in each direction uh, before cycling the light to the next uh, and allowing a green left turn lane to stay green for uh, you know a certain seven or eight more seconds longer uh, makes an, a world of difference. That intersection, I actually heading both directions on Route 23 this weekend, didn't come to a full stop heading either direction because the light turned green uh, as I approached and I continued straight through. So uh, hopefully that will ease traffic. Uh, and it's, it's also for weekdays as well. It just uh, recently happened, and the first time I really experienced it was was yesterday. But uh, hopefully on weekdays, especially during the rush hour, uh, we will see significant uh, traffic flow through that area. We're going to continue to monitor now uh, Union Ave and uh, Stevens Ave because the concern that I now have is with a lot, a lot of additional traffic making its way through the Route 23 and Main Street Light, we may have additional traffic at Union Ave or at Stevens Ave. And we may need to tweak those lights a little bit, uh, but again, those we can tweak ourselves without going through uh, many hoops. We just need to call a company in to do that. So we'll continue to monitor those um, while the DOT continues to monitor uh, Route 23 and has advised that if necessary, they will make additional updates uh, and tweak the timing a, a bit if needed. Uh, but I'm happy that was a substantial step in alleviating what the uh, a lot of people seem to call a traffic issue here in town, despite uh, it really just being a couple of lights where we see a little bit of, of, of delay. So uh, we should really see some major alleviation, at least in that intersection moving forward. Thank you, Mayor. So we'll continue to monitor that and see how that's working out for the township. Are there any questions or comments regarding what the mayor just brought forth? 
I have a motion to open the meeting for the public for agenda items only. Move. Moved by Councilmember and Cherry, second. second by Councilman Havlitz. All those in favor of opening the meeting to agenda items only, do so by saying aye. Aye. Well, those opposed, do so by saying nay. Mrs. Krauss. Anyone wishing to address the Township Council may do so through the Council President. It is preferred if you give your name and address for the record. Comments are to be limited to three minutes. However, if appropriate, you may be granted additional time in the sole discretion of the Council President. Members of the public who have joined the meeting virtually and desire to provide comment shall raise their virtual hand in the Zoom application. The meeting moderator will cue the members of the public that wish to provide comment and the council president will recognize them in order. Members of the public who have joined the meeting by calling in must press star six to mute and unmute themselves and star nine to raise their hand. Members of the public who have joined the meeting via the Zoom application must click the reactions icon and then the raise hand icon. Once the process is complete, we will return to the regular order of business. Thank you, Mrs. Krauss. The floor is now open. Mr. Kusha, is there anyone in the chat that would like to come forth? Is there anyone in the council chambers that would like to come forth? Does the council members have any final comments? Mayor, do you have any final remarks? I do have one final reminder. Uh, the Little Falls ABC, uh, who hosts all of our concerts in the park in the summer, uh, have a major fundraiser coming up on April 26th at the Ties at 6.30 p.m. It is their idol search that they are going to be hosting. It's a tricky tray, uh, as well as a uh, singing contest, and all residents are invited to attend. Uh, if you want to go, you can email the contact littlefallsabc at aol.com, uh, and you can buy tickets to attend. Thank you, Mayor. We have a motion uh, to close the public comment. So moved. moved by Councilman Vincherry. Second. Second by Councilman Murphy. All those in favor in closing the public comment, do so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, do so by saying nay. I want to thank uh, Chief Pearl, our engineer, for attending this evening's uh, meeting. Thank you. And to all the staff who helped uh, facilitate this meeting. I have a motion to close this meeting. So, so moved. Moved by Councilman Murphy, second by Councilman Hablitz. All those in favor of closing this meeting, do so by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, do so by saying nay. This meeting is now officially closed. <laughs>